There's a lot of tips and tricks for Overwatch 2 in this video with a healthy mix of beginner to advanced tactics. But before that, I want to remind you to tune into the playoffs from October 30th to November 3rd with the grand finals on November 4th right after on the Overwatch League YouTube channel. First, you can earn three Overwatch League home and away skins for every three hours watched, up to 30 hours in the Sojourn, Kiriko, and Junker Queen skins during the Grand Finals. You can also earn five League tokens every hour watching live matches, which you can spend in the shop to buy the Clockwork Zen or the Happy Genji skin, for example. But wait, there's more. You can also earn this Pulse Pistol name card, these six player icons, and two of these awesome looking sprays as well. Here is the full drops table for both the playoffs and the Grand Finals. Additionally, you can head on over to the Overwatch League site and register your picks for the crystal ball pick'em. If you predict and pick the perfect bracket, you will be entered into a prize pool to win $100,000 with $5,000 awarded for the best bracket. Everything here is free, it's fun, so again, tune in from October 30th to November 4th to enjoy the highest level of Overwatch 2 gameplay while reaping all these rewards over at the Overwatch League YouTube channel. Thanks again for sponsoring this video, Overwatch League. Let's get back into the tips and tricks so maybe one day you can play on the main stage as well. If you're looking to grab targets of Zarya far away, like inside this room, you can use Zarya's secondary fire first as a reference to see where it'll land, because they have the exact same arc. This also applies to Baptiste if you're unsure if your immortality field will land in this room, for example. Again, fire his secondary fire healing grenade as a reference, and then lamp so you'll never miss again. Health packs remove damage over time effects, or DOT effects, which are Ash's Dynamite, Widowmaker's Venom Mine, or Junker Queen's Bleed. Whenever you ping an enemy, there's actually a visual indicator that shows the amount of HP they have if you look carefully. When they're less than 50% HP, a yellow triangle with a skull appears. When they're critically low at less than 25% HP, it's a red diamond. You'll also notice the ping sound is higher pitched as well when pinging an injured enemy versus a regular enemy. Watch out for this one. Watch out for this one. After dying, you have three seconds to press the ping button, which will automatically mark the person who killed you. And while you're at it, watch the kill cam briefly to see the ultimate charge the person who killed you has. It's a very basic and easy way to ultimate track and call it out for your team. Now for an advanced way to ultimate track, you can actually use the scoreboard. It's really easy when the game first starts when everybody has zeros across the board. Here's the essential knowledge about ultimates you need to know first. Every hero in the game has a set amount of alt charge points they need in order to build their ultimate, which is converted to a 0 to 100% in the in-game UI. The exact amount of ultimate charge needed per hero isn't available in-game, and you'd have to look it up on the Overwatch wiki. For instance, Zarya requires 2100 ultimate points. You actively gain one ultimate point per damage or healing done, and you also gain five alt points per second passively, which equates to about 300 per minute. Here's me pulling this tip off in an actual game trying to track the Zarya. The Zarya is 1900 okay, damage and you can use this to all track. So it's been about, you can press tab, it's been 1 minute 37 seconds in grab. game. Which means you build 300 charge per second, 30 seconds in, 450 all charge passively, and she's got 2000 charge built up based on damage. Which therefore means she's 2500, how much is it for grab? I forgot how many ult points it is. Oh, okay, shit. oh there it is. Oh. Well, as soon as I called it out, she ended up grabbing when I made the educated guess that she had 2,500 alt points, which means she definitely had grab. So yeah, that's how you do it in game. You can stun diva bombs with most abilities with a stun, not all of them. That would include Roadhog Hook, Doomfist Rocket Punch, Orisa Spear. You cannot stun it with Anna Sleep Dart or Sigma's Rock. Active payloads for attacking teams heal 10 HP per second. Remember, this is only active payloads, so inactive payloads, like let's say on hybrid maps while you haven't captured the point yet, will not grant any healing for the attacking team yet. When combined with the passive that supports get in particular, they actually regenerate 25 HP per second, really incentivizing them to play on the objective, especially if they need some quick healing. It also acts as a piece of cover. Some of you might be surprised the payload heals you, so you may be wondering if the push robot heals you, and the answer is no, it's different. Now back on the topic of payloads, attackers can actually increase the speed that the payload moves with each additional person up to a maximum of three people. Each person makes it move 16.5% faster with a cap at 33%. 
But when we're talking about push maps, the robot, Lil Timmy, only needs one person for its maximum speed. It does not increase with more people on it. And as a side note, I hear this on TikTok all the time in the comments where people are claiming that Lucio's speed boost can increase the push robot speed. That is just misinformation. Only person you should listen to on TikTok is me. More daily tips on TikTok at CarQ Games. Thank you. When playing push, you need to get off the robot when time is running out and you've won the team fight and you have a lead because all you're doing at that point is leading the bot closer to the enemy spawn to give them a better chance to touch and trigger overtime. Don't do that. This is how you do it properly. I think we don't push, don't push. Yeah, don't push so that the bot's further away from them. Yeah, that way they need to get here. Oh, that's the brain. Cool. Hi, hi. Huge brain play, man. Yeah. Yeah, yep, see, like if we pushed, he would have touched it for sure. So true. Oh, what? On maps with elevators, you can delay it from taking you up as long as you keep jumping up and down. This is nice if you're waiting for a teammate who's nearby and wants to go up with you. Don't leave him hanging. The gun sounds in Overwatch 2 have vastly improved, and it can give you positional information based on the way the bullets sound. Listen carefully again. This is out in the open versus inside a hollow room like the cave. A lot of heroes have custom settings such as Nano Confirmation or Lucio Backwards Wall Ride. Head into the controls of your favorite heroes and check them out. Maybe you'll find a setting you'd like to tune. You can shoot barriers through walls if they stick out, especially if you have nothing else to shoot at and you're not in like a sneaky flanking position because everything helps. Speaking of walls, one way to stop bombs from accidentally killing your teammates as Ryan or Brig when it's on your shield is to drop them off inside walls so that the explosion is contained within. You can rocket jump with heroes that have an ability that has a knockback on it so you can get into a better position or dodge enemy abilities. These would include Bastion, Zarya, Soldier, and Farah. Pay attention to map geometry and look for little holes in the maps. Any projectile in the game just needs the center of the hitbox to make it through, so big fire strikes can go through tiny holes like this. You need to learn where all the health packs are on each map. There's a bunch of new maps in Overwatch 2, and if you're an Overwatch 1 veteran, I highly suggest you go around them in a custom game and learn them. Knowing where each mini and mega health pack is can help you pick your fights better. For example, I just found out that there's a mega health pack beside the push robot on New Queen Street here. Did you know about this? Don't die in Overwatch 2, or at least try not to die as often. Play your life. And it sounds like a really silly and easy tip, but think about it. Every time you die, you're getting zero value for however long the respawn time is, 10 seconds or whatnot, and then you have to add into the fact that you have to run back to where the team fight is happening. That's like 20 seconds of doing nothing. Play your life. It's extremely valuable in 5v5 Overwatch. It's okay to back off, play natural cover, wait for healing, go for health packs, and it's better to be useless for 10 seconds of running into cover than for 20 seconds. Plus, enemies may remember that you're nearby, so that simple positional threat of you still being around the corner can affect their decision making. Did you know Zarya glows when she's high energy? You need to learn what a medium or high charge Zarya looks like so you know when to play at range and respect her damage. Sojourn's gun also opens up and glows bright blue when she's holding high charge for her railgun, so try to call it out to your team so that they can respect sightlines and avoid being railed, or one shot. You can use moving objectives to move deployable objects like Bap's window, his lamp, Torb turret, Hammond mine, sentry turrets, etc. Widowmaker's ultimate infrasight lasts 15 seconds, so whenever you hear the enemy Widow's ult and you hear her voice line, look at the game time and do some quick maths by subtracting 15 seconds so you know when she no longer has her wall hacks up. And that's it for this episode of Tips and Tricks. More tips being given on stream at twitch.tv slash carq almost every day.